when I do this in my man cave, it always works, Andrew. How do I get it back to my, maybe that'll do it. When I put it on sleep, it goes for sleep, and I shouldn't have. There it is. It's one good thing about having just a Bible. Disclosing everything. <laughs> okay. Let's pray. Father God, just thank you for, for our church family here and the love we have for each other and, and just knowing that we all have struggles. And the struggles I'm going to be talking about this morning are, I feel, tearing our nation apart. And just give me the guidance and the love that uh, you will help me give the lesson that I'm trying to prepare now. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I didn't want to start about jokes or anything. I don't do jokes very well. So I'll start out as a science teacher. This will be uh, an introduction in a minute, and we'll have a conclusion. And I sure hope this thing works. Maybe I better turn it on. It's on. I'll use this. <laughs> Would you believe I checked my battery? Ah, thank you, Lord. Okay. As you can tell from the, the first statement I'm making, there are only two genders. Always have been, always will be. I think you realize that transgenderism and wokeism, I feel, is just tearing America apart. And I'll be getting, uh, giving some scriptures and, and write them out, but also there'll be some scriptures that I'll just give you a reference because I have three or four of them and I don't want to, uh, it would be just too time consuming. This thing is not wanting to work. When in doubt, what is it, Joe? Go to the basics. <laughs> Every person is either male or female. A person's gender, male or female, is determined at conception. It's formed in the womb of the female. It is identify, identified at birth, remains unchanged for life. This is the way the Lord God carefully and lovingly created all of us. Truth is simple. What you should have learned in school about gender we'll be talking about and some other things. If you're in biology class, biology says, or biology is, the science that deals with the origin, history, physical characteristics, life processes, habits, etc., of living organisms plants and animals, and under that you have other subtopics. Gender in biology, you learned the fact or condition of being a male or a female human being. By definition in biology, there were only two genders. Gender is directly and inseparably tied to one's sex. Sex, a little more definition either of two divisions, male or female, into which persons, animals, plants are divided with reference to their reproductive functions. The character of being male or female, all attributes by which males and females are distinguished. Both gender and sex are limited only to two 
distinct possibilities, male or female. Male is an adjective designating or of the sex that fertilize the ovum of the female and begets offspring consisting of men or boys biologically distinguished from the female sex. It can also be a noun. A male person is a man or a boy, male animal, or it could be a male plant. Female, adjective distinguishing or of the sex that produce, produces ovia and bears offspring consisting of women and girls biologically distinguished from the male sex. It's also a noun, a female person, woman or girl, a female plant or animal. Man, an adult male human, being of the sex distinguished from woman. Woman, an adult female human being of the sex distinguished from man. Father, a man who was begotten of a child, the male parent of a plant or animal. Mother, a woman who has born a child, the female parent of a plant or an animal. What does God say? What does the Bible say? Well, God is always right. The Bible is always right. That's all really that matters to us right now. True biology simply follows God and the Bible. God made them male and female. You can read this in Genesis 1.27, Genesis 5.2, Matthew 19.4, and Mark 10.6, and a lot of other places. God also made animals male and female. Every living thing of all flesh, in Genesis 6.19 and 7.16, List them as birds, donkeys, goats, herds, flock, and we could go on and on. If you're reading your chronological Bible, when they were sacrificing all these different characters, characters is not a good word, uh, sacrificial animals or whatever, they always specified a male ram, a female this or whatever. Animals were clearly hot clearly distinguished by identifiable differences. Those identifiable instruments are the same for you and for livestock. And this, of course, we I just kind of mentioned, got ahead of myself. The Bible and science both teach that your inside, your DNA, matches your outside, mm -hmm. your parts, so to speak. One might attempt to change the outside and even sometimes inside, but the inside will never change. Your DNA remains unchanged and unchangeable, I might add there. The average body has about three trillion cells. I didn't misread that, 30 trillion cells. Do you have any concept what a trillion is like? I wish I had that much money in the bank. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. Well, to give you an idea, a big football stadium holds about, let's say, a, a million people. Now take one million and divide it into 30 trillion, you would have 300 million uh, football stadiums. That's what you would have to have 30 trillion. Can we even fathom that? That's a pretty big number in your body. Inside the nucleus, you know that little bitty black thing in the middle of your cell that controls your cell? There are 23 pairs of chromosomes. One pair of these chromosomes are the sex chromosomes, identifying one as female, which are called XX, and one could be male, XY. And no matter what they do to your body, you will always be female if you have X. If you're a male, they may call you a female, but as a male, if you have the transformations we'll be talking about, you will always have your chromosomes. Female, X, male, Y. Every cell in your body, except your red blood cells, are those sex chromosomes that are in it. They all match. Every cell in your body tells whether you are a male or a female. It cries that out. You may be able to change a lot of things about you, 
but you can't change the sex chromosomes inside the nucleus of 30 trillion cells. Be kind of hard to do with a hypodermic needle, wouldn't it? When God made you male, you will be a male for the rest of your life. When God made you female, you will be a female for the rest of your life. Gender is not something that you choose. A person's gender, male or female, is determined at conception, formed in the womb, identified at birth, and remains unchanged for the rest of that life. In math class, a couple of things we can talk about. Math is a class where you learn to do basic functions like counting and adding. I always had trouble getting above that, but we won't talk about that. Some count the number of genders with significant variation today. One college application asked the applicants to select from 37 different genders that you are or choose to be. One medical article besides male and female, there are 32 other genders that they are, I'm gonna put quotation marks, finding. We are told that gender is not binary. It is not identified with your sex. They say gender is a term that relates to how we feel about ourselves. They also say the idea is to make everyone feel comfortable in their skins irrespective of what gender they were assigned at their birth. But God says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but in its end, it is a way of death. My biological definitions and my biblical teachings, there are only two genders, male and female. In math, we can count to two. <laughs> In math, we can add up to two. Fifty times in the Bible, humans in the same verse are clearly distinguished by identifiable genders, male and female. Twelve times in the Bible, Adam, Adam, animals in the same verse are clearly distinguished by identifiable genders, male, female. 83 times in the Bible, humans in that same verse are clearly distinguished by identifiable genders, man, woman. 43 times in the Bible, humans in the same verse are clearly distinguished by identifiable genders, men, women. In God's math class, we see that there is no way to get more than two genders, one male, plus one female equals two genders. History class. Throughout history, the difference between male and female has always been very distinguishable and identifiable by all cultures. When the Israelites were slaves in Egypt, two very different peoples in cultures differed between male and female the same way. The Hebrew midwives could tell the difference between male and female. The Egyptian king could tell the difference. The Egyptians could tell the difference. Jochebed, Moses' mother, could tell the difference. Miriam, Moses' sister, could tell the difference. Pharaoh's daughter could tell the difference. 1,500 years later, gender could still be easily distinguished in Matthew 2.6. Historical events in the first century involved both men and women, Acts 5.14, 18.22, with the only two opinions being male, men, or women. Historical characters are always identified as men or male, man and male, woman or female. Since the beginning of time, every person has clearly been extinguishable, identifiable as male 
or female. Science has not changed. The Bible has not changed. Truth has not changed. Today we are witnessing what happens when you plant ideas and feelings in people's heads and then celebrate and encourage those feelings. That's not science. It's not Bible. It's not truth. They say gender is a term that releases or relates, sorry, how we feel about ourselves. Feelings are not safe trustworthy, acceptable, consistent standards for anything. We have the scriptures. Jacob went near Isaac, his father, and felt him. Remember, he, uh, Jacob could not see, and so Isaac put on the beard and all of that stuff. Won't get into that, but you probably know the story already anyway. Gibeon attacked the army while the camp felt secure. Feelings again are not always the way to go. Saul felt compelled and offered a burnt offering. The story was not good. Shop class, my favorite class. The simplicity and obvious nature of only two genders is evident in everyday life terminology. Male in shop designates a part having shape to fit in two a corresponding hollow spot called female. Set of a pipe, it could be fittings, electrical plugs, and a whole lot of other things, male and female. Female is designating or having a hollow part shaped to receive corresponding inserted part called male to said pipe fittings, electrical plugs, and a lot of other things. The differentiating of male and female is so obvious and discernible by the parts associated there within that the terminology has been used for years and years in various fields of work. Health class. Male is always a male and male parts. Female is always female and has female parts. Like in shop class, the male parts and the female parts correspond precisely to Genesis 2.18 and Song of Solomon's. That is exactly as God designed them. God designed the male parts for the female parts. God designed the female parts for the male parts. Male parts were never designed to go with other male parts. Female parts were never designed to go with other female parts. Scripture makes it clear, and you find that out in Leviticus and Romans. There are often physical ramifications that rise from this result. God's design is one biological male to marry one biological female and to engage with their corresponding parts only inside their lifelong heterosexual marriage. Any other uh, arrangement is sin and will not inherit God's reward. English class, which I did very poorly in. In English class, we learn to properly define terms. In English class, we learn how to read, how to write, and how to understand language. In English class, we learn about simple things like pronouns. He, the man, boy or male, previously mentioned masculine pronoun in the third person singular. She, the woman, girl, female, animal, previously mentioned feminine personal pronoun in the third person singular. They, the persons, animals, or things previously mentioned personal pronoun in the third person, plural. He is always boy or male. She is always woman, girl, or female. I can change my pronoun, but that does not change what I am. In literature, male characters are always he, and female characters are always she. In history, male figures are always he, and female figures are always she. 
The Bible male individuals are always he, and the females are always she. This thing's taken off on me, but he is used, and this just blew me, just blows me away. 10,425 times in the Bible, it's always male. She in the Bible, 971 times, always female. Him, 6,274 times, always male. Her, 1,791 times, always female. His, 7,944 times, always male. Hers, two times in the Bible, always female. Himself, 545 times, always male. Herself, 54 times, always female. The personal never changed for anyone throughout the whole Bible. From the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. Summary and conclusion. There are only two genders. Every person is either male or female. God made boys to be boys. He made boys to always be boys, and they always will be. He made boys to be attracted to and to marry girls. God made you a boy. Accept it. Celebrate it. Own it. Live like it. God made girls to be girls. He made girls to always be girls, and they always will be. He made girls to be attracted to and to marry boys. If God made you a girl, accept it, celebrate it, own it, and, and like it, live like it. Males are always the boys, men, fathers, and sons. Never a girl, never a woman, or never pregnant. Unfortunately, today, they're even talking about men that are able to get pregnant with everything that's going on. And uh, probably should have thrown that in here. Females are always the girls, women, daughters, and mothers. Never a boy, never a man. And you can tell that as we get into some of that, there's just all kind of controversial going out with the female men that are competing in sports and there's just so much if you're reading the uh, the let's see the bible we're reading is called the what babe the chronological if you read the chronological bible you've been in through numbers and can you imagine with the wokeism changing all those male to whatever they do this is really, I'm kind of hitting both the male and the female, wokeism or uh, genderism. And I, I feel sorry for our poor kids. And I, I hope you feel, well, I know you do. And what our, I know what our grandkids are going through. And as grandparents, we're just not talking to them as much as we should. But we're definitely getting hints. And this is a very mild kind of comparison thing, as you'll agree. Scott, it's your job, and probably Andrew and the rest of you, I'm sure there's a lot of things that, you know, the Army started accepting the, uh, the gays, I think it was about 07, I don't remember. So there's just so much battle going on there. And who, who do you think's causing all this? Satan, right. Gender is determined by God and embedded in our DNA not by our feelings. So it's not a matter of how we feel. It's a matter of what God says. What God says in the Bible is truth and will always be truth and it will always be right. God wants the very best for you, always has, always will. He gives us commands and His truth for good news. It is important to be right and accepted in both the eyes of God and it, I misread that. It is more important to be right and accepted in the eyes of God than man. Right is always right even when no one else is doing it. Wrong is always wrong even when everyone else is doing it. So, you know, today you have a chance to be a daughter or a son of God, 
believe in Jesus, repent of your sins and turn to God, confess your faith in Jesus, be immersed into God, God will forgive all your sins, God will add you to your church, and God will enroll you in heaven, which is a wonderful thing. So walk with Him faithfully, and we'll have our song of invitation now.